good day and welcome back so today we're going to look at a application framework a web application framework for writing our backend now just like when we were doing front-end applications before we start when we started our to-do application we didn't have a framework we just wrote html javascript and css and then we started out redundant and difficult that was and then we decided to use the Angular framework. And Angular is for your front-end application only. Angular doesn't do back-end. Now, we start having a back-end, which, you know, RESTful endpoint and basically exposing a service. Uh, well, a number of services, you know, login and authentication and creating tasks and so on. And we saw some redundant things there that we keep doing over and over. Plus, we didn't have any security and all this other stuff. So they are frameworks to help us write our back-end. Now the Express.js framework we're going to look at, you can write both front-end and back-end with it. You can write your entire web application, right? So from front-end to back-end. However, we're going to be using it for our back-end only. And we're going to see exactly how that is done. But first, we got to kind of understand a little bit about Express.js. So our goal in this video then is to understand basically what a web application framework is. What is Express specifically, a little bit about what its mission is. And then we're going to try to use it. And of course, once we do it to do something simple and think, think we have our end around it, then we're going to refactor our to-do application with it. Because that's the whole goal, is to make the applications we want to write easier and faster to develop. So we've defined what the difference between framework and libraries before. And when we start talking about the Angular framework, and generally, just to recap, we can think of it this way. Frameworks provide lifecycle methods that call your application or call your code. Uh, so you run under the control of a framework. It decides when to call you and so on. A library is something you have more direct control over. You call a library. So a library might provide a number of functions and you call it. Whereas a framework calls you. Okay, so that's basically the basic um, difference between them. Now, here, I pull this definition from Wikipedia. It says, a web framework or a web application framework is a software framework that is designed to support the development of web applications, including web services, web route resources, and web APIs. So far, we've kind of been, you know, both uh, web APIs, right? You know, the RESTful APIs that we've been able to call. Web, app web frameworks aim to alleviate the overhead associated with common activities performing web development. That is exactly what we want. I highlighted that part to show that uh, what we want is to use, we want to use a framework in both for the front end and the back end is to alleviate the overhead and the grunt work of creating web application. And then you know, it goes on to say, for, many, for example, many web frameworks provide libraries for database access, template from frameworks and session management and all these other things, and of course, code reuse and so on. And talk about you can use them for dynamic websites. Those are websites that basically like your Gmail or the application we're developing, right? You, it's dynamic. Every time you come, you could see something different. It doesn't have the same information. The information is not static. So again, we want to use a web framework to help us with the overhead of you know creating routes and handling certain things. Oh, it says here that web frameworks can provide you know, libraries for data act, database access and template and all this other stuff. The framework we're going to be used, Express, it doesn't provide libraries for these, but they can. So let's go and take a look at Express.js now that we understand in general what a web framework might offer. So we know what a web framework can provide you. And Express.js is a web application framework. And we know that you can use them to build up um, web applications. Specifically, Express.js is on the Node.js platform. If we were using Java, then we'd use something like Spring, which is the web framework for the Java platform. And you know, if we're using some other platform or a language backend, we would use frameworks in those um, environments. So since we are in Node, Express is for Node. But this is what it says from the Express.js web website. It's fast, it's unopinionated, it's minimalistic web framework for Node.js. Now, the fast path comes in because it's small and it's minimalistic. So it's fast, right? It doesn't provide you a whole lot. If you remember what we said from the Wikipedia page says, 
that our web frameworks can provide libraries for database access, session management, security, a whole host of things. But Express is not one of them. Express is one of those small web application frameworks that does not dictate how you access a database, how you manage security. None of that comes with Express, okay? But still, we want to use it because while it doesn't have an opinion, that's why it's unopinionated, while it doesn't have an opinion on how you access your database or your session or your security, it does provide you some things about setting up your route, for example. So you can kind of say they have some opinion on, on how you set up your route um, because it kind of dictates that oh, you should use you know, this pattern or whatever, but or this regular expression as we'll see later. But bottom line is it's minimalistic, right? It gives you the bare minimum, and um, that's one of the reasons why it's easy to understand, easy to use, and it's fast. Right. Of course, when you want to do the other things like securities and stuff, you can have, you can have to add in add other libraries. And people have written other Express libraries for those other things, as you, you know, we'll see later on. First thing we want to do is figure out how we should use it. And since Express is a Node.js package, or it comes with a Node.js package, we could just install it how we install or anything else with Node.js. Um, you know, last time or before we started using um, JSON file. So, npm install or even bower we install this way right we did bower install and minus g for global but we don't need global we just need express per application so we're basically in our application directory once we have our um, package that's json file can remember our package json file is what tells keep track of the name of our application the entry point and most importantly it says which mod node modules we use so that if i give you my package json file all you have to do is say npm install. Once you're in that directory, an npm will be smart enough to read the package of JSON file and go install all the dependencies that I need for my application, okay? So once we say the dash dash save at the end, it means update my package of JSON file with this particular dependency, which is express, and so now it's saved in there. And you can see I use npm init to create a package of JSON file, and the only thing I really changed was the entry point. By default, it put index.js as the entry point, I tend to like to use app.js, but you can use whatever you want. Once we have our package.json file, then we can go ahead and do the npm install express minus minus save, and that's gonna do its thing. And once it's finished, we can now start writing a simple um, express.js application. So we're gonna do a simple web, um, web app that when any client connects, and do a request, they get hello world. And if you look at the this Express application, it does look very different from if you had used the HTTP live uh, module that's provided in Node. The thing that, that really stands out here, the big difference is with the HTTP module from Node, we use that directly, we have to say, you know, create a server. So just like we create an application there in line five, we would have created a server from the HTTP library. Then we we'll say like listen, and then we in our callback function we we'll have to handle all the requests that come in and say oh is it a get is it for this path or that path? But notice on line seven we simply say app that get and we see the method we want to handle, and then we put right there the path and then the callback function. So immediately we see how much easier this is for even handling um, just simple things because. It provides us that get method is what we, we call. We didn't have to check and from the request which method it is like we were doing before. So without express, this is what our code looked like. And of course, you saw in the previous slide what it looked like when using express. Of course, there's documentation on the express website for how you do um, basic routing and more. So I encourage you to go read it. It's not very long and it's not very tears or hard to understand. It's very, very easy and digestible. So please do read it. Now we have our simple application. Running is no different than how we were running um, our, you know, Node.js application before. So that's it, and it's listening. And now we can connect, and we should expect to see, you know, the hello world, which we do. Uh, now we've written a basic application. I think we actually know enough basically to get started and refactoring our application. And so just remember, when we go to run our application, we have to create basically three windows: one to run our front end one to run our backend, and then one where we're gonna create that force, um, use curl to create that force admin user so we can log in because we do start up without any user whatsoever 
and our front end does not allow us to create a user without first logging in. So we have this chicken and egg problem, but we solve it very easily by just posting a new user from the command line. And then we can go to our front end, log in with this user, and then we can add tasks and add many other users and so on. Before we start refactoring our application, there's one concept in Express we should cover, and that's a middleware. So middleware is a function you register with your Express application, and it gets called, that function gets called before, um, for each request, before your handler for that, whatever the route is, okay? So you want to think of these middleware as things that are chained. You can have zero or more middleware, and once you register money with multiple middlewares, they're chained together. So the first middleware is going to be called with a, the request object, the response object, so it can, that, that middleware can actually do a response to, and then the, a pointer to the next, or a reference to the next middleware in the chain. And so if that middleware does this thing, look at the request or whatever, or send some response, and then decide like, hmm, I can pass this on, well, to the next thing in the chain, you would call that and pass it on. If not, it can terminate that request at that point. So what is this good for? Imagine that you had a middleware that handling security, for example, and every request that came in, it looked at it and examined it and see who's making the request. Did the user submit the um, login token? And if that token is not there, well, then they can't access this particular route or path or endpoint or whatever. And so that would be a security middleware that would, for every request that come in, examine it. And then if it doesn't pass muster, whatever the requirements are, it would terminate it. And the handler would never see it. But if it passes, then it can pass it on. And the number of middlewares that people have written for Express, but you should just understand the concept because for our needs and for our to-do application, one of the things we're going to want to handle for every request is the cross-origin request or you know cross-domain scripting. And so we'd want to install, install a middleware that for every request looks at it, and if it needs to handle that, take care of it. So that's the only concept here that you need to, to understand before we actually start writing our application. You can see it's not very um, different from basically a handler function for a request anyway, because you could see it's, get, it's a function that gets called with three parameters. You can look at all the code in the repository, but this is what our new app.js looks like. And you can see it's just about 55 lines. The above this 20, from line one to 20, is just you know comments and constants and requirement statement. But basically, this is it. So we have a variable now for the, to construct our different endpoints. And then on line 26, we're registering our middleware. But the middleware there is just this function that we have defined from line 36. And if you look at it, it's just a function, like we said, that takes the request, the response, and next. And here we're going to check for the cross-origin stuff for every request. And then after that, we're just going to pass it on. And that's it. That's, that's all our middleware needs to do for handling cross-origin. And then if you look, you can see in the other lines, three lines, we register routes to different uh, endpoints. So here in our application is where we say, oh, for this endpoint, I want you to have uh, register this route. And we're going to see exactly what a, what a route is. So application uh, request handling basically breaks down to a request comes in goes to our middleware, and then after it leaves the middleware, then Express determines how to route that request based on the route we've registered. And once it routes it to one, assuming that it's one of the routes we've defined, the endpoints that we've defined, once it goes to the route, we've implemented our route as a node um, module. Even in the previous video, we did that, and we just do a require, and we pass in, like, let's say, whatever is, you know, is needed for that module. In the case of the user and task, we provide, we provide it with the database that they need to use. But for our authentication service, we didn't need to provide anything. But in our authentication service now, we see that we've rewritten it, and what we do is require express. Then we create what's called express route by using express that route, and that gives us a return something that is a route, a route, a router, sorry. And then line three, and then now we configure that router. And you can see we start using a rotor on line 17 where we say rotor that post. And it's just again calling that method um, that we want, the HTTP method we want to handle on this router. And we say which path. Now, the strange thing here is we're saying just forward slash. That looks like the root. Well, it's not quite the root because remember, in our application itself, app.js, 
we're using this rotor to say, I want you to handle this path. And because the path was already specified on the application, we'll know our rotor just have to do relative to that path that we are registered this rotor on. So hence why it's just slash. But the whole path really is going to get called for, you know, slash API slash version one slash login slash or whatever we define in our rotor. And so now you can see how much easier this is and it allows us to abstract and deal with one thing at a time and cut down on the boilerplate. As you can see, when you look at this code, it's much less code than what we've written previously because we don't have to do all the check-in for the meta, we don't have to do check-in for the path, much, much easier. Before we wrap up, wrap up, just one more slide to drive home this point of why using something like a framework really helps you out in a number of ways if you haven't already seen that. So here in our user service, for example, we do the same thing as we did in the authentication service, which we require the express library and then we say create a router. Now router on line 16, we say we want to handle the delete um, method call on this route. Now remember, the actual endpoint is going to be set in by our, our application, which is good because it allows us to just focus our attention on the specific um, of, you know, thinking of our route as root, but remember the root of this is going to be relative to whatever the application dictate is the base of this route. And so this router, we're going to say handle delete slash colon ID. But if you remember from our previous code, when we had something like this, we actually um, had to extract that ID ourselves. We had to say that, you know, the ID is going to be passed, but we now need to um, have this function, this utility function that says, you know, extract ID from URL. Express is doing that for us and it sticks it in the request in this params object. And now we can take it out from there. Now you can look at the express documentation for router and you'll see um, and handle it and the handlers and you'll see that it under much more complex type of request path. You can put several of these things in there, you know, colon ID, colon something else. And if you for example, you wanted someone to be able to search for a range from, from something to something, you can put two variables in there and it would extract it all for you. So again, or maybe year and date for some article, you know, year, month, whatever. So you can, any set of complex URL, it can really take care and extract the, the different parts for you, put it in that params object, and now you can just easily get it. So once again, using the framework helps us take care of these boilerplate things. And again, the key thing is alleviate the effort in developing web applications. Thank you for your time. I hope you've learned something. I hope you're still excited about learning and you like the path and the pace that I'm taking. Uh, take care. See you in the next video. Subscribe if you haven't. Spread the word. Bye.